July, there's an attack on the family. And if there is any place that, that should know the importance of focusing on the family, it ought to be the church. So today, I'm going to talk about building strong families. Let me hear you say building strong families. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a matter of great importance. And it happens to be one of my most important subjects that I could ever deal with. And I think you know that I've dealt with a lot of subjects as a pastor. I am not afraid to tackle any subject. Because I'm a man of God, and God is my boss, and uh, I, I'd rather obey him than to obey man, and I don't fear the one who can kill my body, but the one who can take my body and soul. <laughs> but when, it, when I talk about the family... I'm talking about one of the most important subjects because the family is the foundation of the society. It's the foundation not only of a society, but of a church and of a community. When families are strong, the society is strong. When families are strong, the church is strong. The community is strong. But there's a problem when it comes to the family, ladies and gentlemen, because there is an all-out attack on the institution of the family. Divorce is an attack. Perversion is an attack. Abuse is an attack. And of course, there are other things that I could uh, highlight. These are ailments that are directly attacking the family as we know it to be. Consequently, it is causing deterioration in the family. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a tragedy because if the family deteriorates, there is not much hope for the church or for the community or a society. So this month, month of June, and I try to do this every year, probably need to do it more often. But this month, I'm calling it Family Month, and it is my endeavor to preach messages that will cause us to refocus on the family. Now, I know I'm not able to heal all of the issues in your family and in my family, but at least I hope that I will make us look at our family life and look at our situation and see how we can do better. Because if your family is going to change, you've got to do it. No preacher can do it. No counselor can do it. No family therapist can do it. They can help you, can guide you, can talk to you, but ultimately, you've got to do it. Touch yourself and say, I've got to do it. Now, God understood this uh, in the beginning because the family is God's first institution. Let me try that again. And I have some Bible readers here. You know I'm right. 
When you read the scripture, you will come to discover that even before God instituted the church, even before God instituted government, the family, the family is God's first institution. It is found in the book of beginnings. Genesis 1, 27. You don't have to turn there. I know what I'm talking about. I can read it. So you listen. Genesis 1 and 27 says, So God created man in his own image. Now that's something right there to perk up about. Because that means I got a little God on the inside of me. And more of us need to let that God come out. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. God's plan for the family was that was for a man and a woman to come together in holy matrimony, produce children and raise them in the admonition of God. I said that a little fast so let me slow it down. God's plan for the family was for man and woman to come together. I said God's plan. Now, I didn't make this up. If you can read the Bible, you'll see it all through the Bible that God's plan for the family was for a man and a woman to come together in holy matrimony, produce children, and raise them in the admonition of God. This is God's design. This is the biblical design for the family. But we already know that there's a problem because statistics show that one out of every two marriages end in divorce. People get married, but we can't stay married. And anytime divorce occurs, I had to write a book on it because I've been through it. So I'm not preaching to you, I'm preaching to me. You know, and I thank God that even whatever you went through, he's a God of forgiveness. And he gives you another chance to get it right. And so I thank God for my chance, and now I'm trying to get it right. That's why if this one talk about leaving me, just pack two bags because. <laughs> pack mine too. <laughs> I'm going to get it right because it's cheaper to keep them. <clears throat> Sometime. <laughs> so divorce attacks the family. And let me tell you something about divorce. I don't care how you choose to work together. You know, we're going to work together and raise the kids. It is not the same as it is when that man and that woman are living together in that home and working together to raise the kids. Children, it is hard to raise those kids. And you can say whatever you want. It takes an impact. There is an effect on the life of children when mom and dad can't stay together. So y'all didn't want to clap because they're they going to be all right. Yeah, they, they probably will be all right. But you cannot tell me that when we do it God's way, somebody ought to just say God's way. 
You cannot tell me it is not better. Now, I'm not talking about when man and woman in the house shooting at each other and pulling knives and boiling grits and it ain't morning time. <clears throat> I don't even eat grits at night for that reason. Don't, I don't even go to, when I go to the Waffle House, if it's night, I do hash browns, smothered, covered, dice. Help me. Because I don't do grits at night. Grits of. <laughs> Brethren, you better hear me. H honey, you want some grits? Uh uh. Wait till in the morning. Because it's nighttime. Now, you young folk don't understand what I'm talking about. But you seasoned saints, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, one out of every two marriages end in divorce. 80% of African American homes have only one parent in the house. 80%, eight out of 10 homes in the African American community have only one parent. One parent. And that parent is at work more than they are at home. So we have a situation where families really don't have much of a chance to succeed. Now that doesn't mean we can't do it, can't make it, because many of you defied the odds. But you had to work your tail off to do it. It is hard when you're trying to raise children and don't have no help. Amen. Ought to have a witness around here. Amen. When you got to do it all by yourself, I don't care if he's in the house or not or she's in the house or not, when you got to do it all by yourself, because that's not God's design. Now why in the world would God design that it took a man and a woman to produce them but doesn't take a man and a woman to raise them? So if he knew what he was doing in the production area, I wish I had one or two witnesses, then look like he ought to know what he's doing when it comes to raising. Because the father brings something to the table that mama can't bring. And mother, mother brings something to the table that daddy can't bring. And whether it's a boy, am I preaching halfway decent? Or a girl, they need balance. Boys need to see their daddies because they need to know how a man should carry himself. Girls need to see their daddies because she needs to know how a man should treat her. And vice versa. Now I'm almost finished, I guess. So that's God's design. That's God's design. Now I said that to say this. When you look at God's design, if you don't get anything else from this sermon today, if you are married and you're raising kids, I don't care how hard it is, I pray that you will find a way to hang in there. Now, I didn't get too much. I pray 
that you will find a way to hang in there because you give your children a greater advantage. Number one, more finances in the home when two people are working together or even if just one working. More right there in the home and then more stability because our children, and I'm going to talk more about that this month too, because our children are struggling. Listen, the African-American community, something's wrong when eight out of every ten homes are headed by a single parent, one parent in the home. And we're losing our children, our children, because all children need guidance. <clears throat> all of them need guidance. And I would pray, I would pray. Those of you who work with children, you know it's a little better when you got to deal with one of those children where mom and dad is there and they are on one accord. It's a little better. So they need guidance. So that's God's plan for the family. Now this ain't no shouting kind of sermon, y'all. But y'all... But you better not go to sleep. If I see anybody sleep today, I'm, I promise I'm going to come right down and stand right over you and lay my hands and say, God's design. Now, from time to time, you're going to hear me holler, not because this is a hollowing sermon. Okay. So I pray that you would t hang in there because I know people, you know, marriage is not easy. It's not easy. I don't care how much you love that person. It is not easy. But you give yourselves a better chance and you give your children a better chance. But then if you get out of that marriage and you think, well, I got to find the right person. Well, there ain't no right person. It's a, you, you develop, you evolve. Are you hearing me? You evolve. It's a commitment. You see. It's working through the difficult periods in the mat. Well, he hurt me. Well, you done hurt somebody. Or she hurt me. Hang in there because we are ruining our communities and our society because we cannot keep it together. Amen. Now some of us in here have already made that mistake. But don't make two. Let's do the best we can now. Am I helping anybody? I hope so. The downfall of the family unit in society is one of the most tragic things facing mankind. The destruction of the family unit all begins with the destruction of what starts a family. The marriage of a man and a woman. It's hard to find people who have not been divorced and remarried at least once these days. Very difficult. Why? Because the institution of marriage and family is generally not held in the esteem that God meant for it to be. I mean, come on. You saw somebody else and now you're attracted to them and what? That attraction is going to die down just like the other one did. Well, she had half flowing all down the back. All you got to do is go buy your one. You got wigs, you got weave, extensions. That's what you want? We got beauticians in here. I promise they can hook you up. Make it look just like your hair. We don't hold marriage in high. You got no fault, divorce. Even the, even the society it's harder to get married 
than it is to get out of it now. No fault. Because we don't hold it in high esteem. And ladies and gentlemen, we are Christians. And if we are Christians, if God holds it, and I'm going to show you how high God holds it. If he holds it in high esteem, then we ought to hold it in high esteem. Because actually, you're going to get old. Both of you are going to get old. And stuff you used to want to do, I'm, I'm trying to help somebody to you. <laughs> because somebody in this room right now, you're on the verge of breaking it up, and it's probably a stupid reason. Something superficial, dumb, and you get the next one. You got to start all over again, and you're going to run into something dumb again. And you're going to look in the mirror and you're going to realize it's me. <laughs> Finally, it's me. I've talked to people who've been married for 50 years and what they would tell you is that we just chose to make it work. And we're glad that we did. <laughs> Through the hardship through the tough pains, we just made it work. You grow together, become friends, all that other stuff. You ain't worried about that no more. Things you used to do, you don't do no more. All of the party and the fun. Now you just want to get a chair and just sit there at the pool. I'm, I'm 50 and I'm, I'm serious. Sometimes you just, just, just hold me. care if y'all uncomfortable. Don't make me no different. Y'all talk about it at work. You're like, oh, 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 I'm uncomfortable today. I don't care. I'm trying to help somebody. God created a man and a woman, joined them together in Genesis chapter 3 verse 24. Y'all write these scriptures down. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. In these words, God's, God instituted the marriage relationship, ordained the family union, and then after Adam and Eve transgressed God's law, children completed the family unit in its simplest form. The problem today with many marriages and even children, uh, and even children, but when things get difficult we want to get out of it that's the first thought well I'm leaving this is why divorce rates have skyrocketed over the last 30 years irreconcilable differences money children infidelity and not what they this ain't what I expected well you went to a job and it ain't what you expected you go to a church, and it's not what you expected. So we use all of those as justifications to end a marriage. But the real reason is selfishness. Selfishness. What I want. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21 Paul admonishes the man and the woman to submit to one another in the reverence of Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
he admonishes them. Submitting to one another is often misunderstood. Doesn't mean you are a doormat. Doesn't mean you are an object to be kicked. Now I'm, I'm preaching, some of you are not married, still listen. Because you needed to know this before you get married. You need to know this before you get married. May help you. Amen. And those of you who are single, you're not married and you want to be, get prepared and believe it's on the way. Believe it's on the way. But make sure you know what you're getting in. Whenever one submits, it means that he or she is not selfish. It's not about what I want, but it's about what my spouse wants. Marriages will do a whole lot better if he looks out for her and she looks out for him. I need to say it again? All right. It'll be a whole lot better if she looks out for him and he looks out for her. That's what it means to submit. To submit means it's not your will, but it's the will of, a, of another person. Jesus submitted to God. That's why in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said to God, not my will, but thy will be done. In other words, I'm willing to submit to what you want me to do. You're looking out for each other. But then notice now that the text says, submit to one another in the reverence of Christ. Now what does that mean? Now you, you, I want you to submit to me and I should, su should submit to you but because I reverence Christ I ain't going to ask you to do something that's ungodly. See now I am not admonished to submit to you when it's out of God's order. Don't ask me to sell dope. Don't ask me to get in nothing crooked. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It's got to be in the reverence of God. I'm almost there. That's what it means. Put the other person's interest before yours. This is God's design. Now let me show you how important marriage is to God. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 24. Let me, go, let me start with verse 23, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. For as a husband is the head of his wife, for a, for a husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of his body, the church. And he gave his life to be her savior. See, the church is a she. That's why we should reproduce. She's a she. She's a her. It ain't a him. Christ is the husband of the church, not the pastor. I got a wife. Grace ain't my wife. I got a wife. Grace ain't my wife. I am the best man that's taking care of the bride of Christ until wedding time. I'm the groom. So I'm not going to take advantage of his wife 
because he trusts me. I wish I had two or three. He left his wife. He said, I'm going away because my woman needs a home. <laughs> I got to put her somewhere. And you just take care of her. Watch over her. Make sure she's all right. I'm going to give you everything you need to take care of my girl. And then I'm coming back. And I'm going to marry her. And I'm going to take her to my home. So now, my that clock has moved. Y'all took some time off that clock, didn't you? God Almighty. I'm going to stick with my time, though. And don't y'all be looking back there to see how long I got. So now, verse 24 of Ephesians says, As the church submits to Christ, so your wives must submit to your husbands in everything. It is here where Paul gives a specific command to wives to submit to your husbands. He uses a simile as the church submits to Christ. Wives submit to your husbands. That's the Bible. Y'all didn't say amen, but that's the Bible. I don't care. I normally don't get an amen right along through there. That's the specific. Now notice he said submitting one to another first. Then he specifically says to the wife, submit to your husband because he's the head of the body. That's God's order. You can't have two heads. That's, that's, that's a monstrosity. That's a monstrous situation. Okay? So Christ is the head of the church. I just, I'm supposed to do what he tells me to do with his wife. Exactly how he says do it. Now, if I get out of order, guess what the groom, the, 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 the groom is going to do? Fire me. Because you did not do what I told you to do with my wife because he says, I'm the head. Understand what I'm saying? See, now, grace is not my church. It's his church. See, because I'm going to die one day, and grace still going to be his church. And he's going to hire another fella to come in and take care of, of his, his bride if he has not come by then. All right, so I want you to see the parallel, church. So he says that, verse 24, as the church submits to Christ, so your wives must submit to your husbands in everything. It is here where Paul gives a specific command. But then I want you to watch the command because ladies sometimes know. But you know what? Let me say this. I believe that when a man does what he's supposed to do by his woman, go to work, Treat her good, love her, encourage her, and all of those things that a man should do. I believe a good woman don't mind submitting to that. I just don't see no decent, godly-minded woman. Now, I don't know. If he's doing all that and she's talking about, well, I just I just want to be the head of the house. I just don't see that. But now let me tell you what the Lord commanded the man. He said he commanded the wife to submit. Let's look at what he commanded the woman, the man. He said, and you husbands must love your wife. But I heard some women then talking about, oh, yeah, Reverend. Yeah, man. I heard some, I heard some high amens. 
Now that's what the <laughs> y'all better come back next Sunday too, because I'm gonna talk about the children a, a little bit more. I ain't got time to do that today, because we're gonna have to raise these children better than what we're doing. I'm just setting the foundation the way God meant for it to be. Now we're gonna talk more because some folk are not in that situation. I don't want you to leave feeling bad. Hey, you a champ. You did what you needed to do. You're doing it, baby. You have, you're doing it by yourself. I applaud you. And your children ought to applaud. I hope these children in here who feel bad about my mom and daddy didn't stay together and look like I didn't get it. I hope you look now and say, wait a minute. Mama had to do that thing by herself. Daddy had to do that thing by himself. Man, I need to go give them a round of applause because they didn't even have the help that they should have had but I still turn out pretty good that's what I'm hoping this message does because I want you to understand the difficulty of not doing it God's way it's very difficult all right I'm almost there verse 25 and you husbands that's what the text said. And you husbands. <laughs> New Living Translation. Must love your wives with the same love Christ showed the church. He gave his life. This is the text I'm just reading. For her to make her holy and clean, washed, by baptism and God's word. So now, Christ loved the church so much until he died for his woman. That's a lot of love there, buddy. Any man who really loves his wife will die for her. You will not let anybody else misuse and threaten if somebody going to die, it's going to be me first. You got to come through me. Jesus gave his life for the church. Why? Because he loved the church. Now notice he didn't say, woman, give your life for him. This is godly order. Now, what is the wife's assignment? Submit. He's your head. Doesn't, don't mean y'all don't talk it out, discuss it, debate. But when the decision comes down, He's the head. Now, if he's smart, he'll listen to you. Because you bring something to the table that he doesn't. Good sense. Because men ain't got it. I mean, come on, brothers. I mean, let we, you know, I just have to be honest. I'm honest. We don't have the best sense. That woman is, is she's smart. She's observing. She sees stuff we don't see. So sometimes we just have to say, you know what, whether that's what you see, because, you know, we just, la da 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 I mean, we just, we just, I mean, everything all right with us. <laughs> yeah. All right. But women... When the final decision comes down, he's going to be held responsible for what happened because he's the head of the wife. Okay? He's to love you, protect you, provide for you, and even die for you. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Hallelujah. 
I'm almost there. The text says in verse 27 that Christ died for the church to present her to himself as a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Then he goes on to say, in the same way husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. You looking good, but she... Your nails done. And I know what, now I, 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 I get all that. I like it all. Manicure, pedicure, massage. Uh, you know, I like to, they be rubbing, uh, that girl was rubbing on them feet <laughs> yesterday. And I had my headphones on, just laid back. <laughs> Said, rub them, girl, rub them. And she got that scraper and it was some stuff on the back of that hill. I said, crock it off. <laughs> I saw white stuff going everywhere. I like it all. But now I shouldn't be looking better than my wife. If, I, if anybody got to do without, it ought to be me. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. So love your wives. Talking about family now. Because family starts with husband and wife. Godly design. Now we're going to talk about some other situations too. We're, we're leaving nobody out. So if you love her like you love, notice the text says, love her like you love your own body. Now, I don't know no man that will take his fist and just knock himself in the face unless he's... Y'all saw that? Unless he's missing... So when a man who won't hit himself but will hit a woman, he's off. The brother is off. Because if you love her like you love your own body, I don't see you cutting your own body and shooting your own body. That's what the Bible says. I ain't making this up. This is how the family should start. Now all of that other stuff will fall in place if we submit one to another, realizing that the family, now let's start back, let's recap. The family, God's design, man and woman, I don't care what the world says. I got to live with that, got to deal with it. I'm cool. But God's design. Now you can try to change it all you want. Ain't, you ain't changing one word in this Bible. All through the Bible, I have read it through and through, and I've never seen any other design for the family and man and woman. Now, those of you who are streaming, you can write, you can put negative comments. I don't care what you do. And some of you in here, you can write me letters. I don't care. Well, I just think that just, you know, you shouldn't say that. I don't uh, Look. Find you another church. Find you one. There are plenty of them around here. 
but I'm going to stick with God's design and I'm going to stick with what God said. Now, I'm not going to beat up on nobody. I'm not going to bash anybody. I'm going to love everybody. But all through that book, right here, that's God's design. And when we do it his way, give me some music, I'm, I'm through. When we do it his way, next week we'll talk a little bit more about raising children because that's hard nowadays. I don't, it's hard when mama and daddy in the house. I know those of you who are having to do it by yourself. Man, I applaud you. I applaud you. I applaud you. Thank God for good parents who when one don't do what he or she's supposed to do. You got a lot of men having to raise children alone. You got a lot of women having to raise them alone. We're going to talk a little bit about that on next week. Y'all been blessed by this little...